Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome to the family. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about Christian dating, season of singleness, marriage in the church, Christian men versus men of God, unequally your relationship, all that stuff we're going to be talking about in today's video and I'm very, very excited about it because it was a well-needed chat. It was a little therapy session, even for myself. So make sure you stay tuned, grab your makeup, if you want to do your hair, if you want to paint, grab all of it and of course, let's have a chat. Okay, let's get started. We're gonna be talking about a lot in this video, as you can tell by the title and the intro. So I hope it's not like 40 minutes long, but we do have a lot to chat about. So if it is, it is. Now the church plays a role in all this. It's a lot. So where do I even start? That's the thing with these like big topics that I love because as you can tell I'm cheesing. I never know where to start because it's just like, by the way, and, and you, you know, there's a lot of layers to it. Okay, I'm just gonna start with, I guess, how I'm handling my season of singleness right now. This foundation is so red. And honestly, I'm proud to say that I'm chilling, y'all. This is looks, I look like an umbu. But yeah, I'm really chilling, guys. I felt like I felt, so, backstory. There was a point where it was like, if I didn't have, I think I shared this story before, but I was at a moment where if I didn't have a boyfriend, like now, 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 me and God, like, what's good? We were gonna have a chat. And then God kind of brought me out of that season, thankfully. I wasn't as desperate or felt the need to have a boyfriend, like, now, now, now. But as you guys saw on my channel, it's like, everybody in my life is getting married. It's like marriage galore up here, which, which glory be to God. But what came with that was people constantly asking, hey, are you dating? Like, what are you, oh, Kemi, you're next. Oh, what is your happening? And I know it was all in, like, good faith and jokes and stuff, but, like, it really put a lot of pressure on me to feel like, okay, I need a boyfriend now. Not just, just for my own peace of mind. I felt like I needed to have a boyfriend now. I kept trying the whole Hinge thing. I just, me and Hinge, I just don't think that's my place. It works for a lot of people. I know many people, I know, not many. I know a few people who met their husband on like dating sites and all that. And it works for them. But I just felt like it wasn't me. And I just felt that pressure again. And I got to a point where I was like, you know what? God, I'm tired. I'm tired of the constantly like going out. It's like, oh my gosh, it's today the day I'm gonna meet my husband. Oh my gosh, is that man my husband? Cause he looked at me, smiled at me for 1.5 seconds. That was just a whole, that's just where my mindset was because when people constantly ask, I'm like, okay, let me at least find something. And this sounds so crazy to say, but I promise God is working on me. God has worked on me in this area. It sounds so crazy to say, but stay with me. There was even a point, not recently, not too recently where not that I wanted to go through heart. This sounds so bad. Not that I wanted to go through a heartbreak or a situation or anything like that. But it was like a little razzle dazzle would be nice. Like it sounds so bad, but I was like, God, you know, a little razzle dazzle won't be bad. Is that not crazy? Is that not what desperation does to us? Now looking back, I'm like, Kemi, are you okay? Who willingly? It wasn't that I wanted heartbreak. It was just like at least I can say I went through something. Or I was talking to something. It was really bad. And I like, I had to get my mind out of that. So I feel like now I'm in a season where genuinely I'm just trying to like, I know people say this a lot, just tr you're working on yourself, but I really am. I really am working on myself. And I also think that knowing that the season of singleness is like a temporary state, like a very, very temporary stage. Let's say, and especially within the church, which you're going to go into like a little bit later. But I feel like at this point, if you get married at 30, they make you feel like you're literally a fossil. But even if you get married at 30, 35, 40, let's say you live to 80, you could still have 40 plus years of marriage. You're, you're going to be married for more of your life than you're going to be single. I hope that said that right. More of your life is going to be spent with your husband or your wife than it is without. So for me, it was also like knowing that also took off the pressure that like, I also need to cherish this season because one thing I stopped doing my makeup as normal. One thing that a lot of married people have told me is like they wish they enjoyed their singleness. And we constantly go through this whole dilemma in life of like, we always get to a stage in life before we realize that we should have cherished the previous stage. And it's like, if I'm hearing what they're saying, why not pay attention to that right now? And like, listen, if they're all saying they wish they enjoyed it, I might as well enjoy it right now. So for me, trying to like intentionally spend time with myself, learning about myself has been what I've been doing a lot recently. I'm even trying to make, especially in the new year after January and stuff, I'm really trying to make it a weekly thing of where I try new things. I don't know if you've seen how people do like the little um jar, like solo date jars and stuff. I want to do that. I've always wanted to try pottery class, candle making class, all that stuff. Cake, I've even seen like the cake making ones or like the or like the cooking classes in like New York. And granted though, some of those things are coupley. There are things that I still want to do. And another thing is also knowing that when I get married, I can't just up and go. If I want to go to New York, literally the next 20 minutes, I can up and go. No problem. 
when I get married, and not this is not saying as a bad thing, but like when I get married, I can't just marry it with kids too. I can't just up and go anymore. I can't just like, okay, I want to go to New York. I'm going. I got to tell my husband, make sure everything's good at the home and all that stuff. And then let's say I have kids. Who's going to take care of the kids? I can't just, and I'm not saying that when you get married, your life ends, but it's also like, you don't have that freedom that you have now. So I think knowing all those things has helped me really like, Kimmy, this is a cherished moment. Yeah, sure, this season of singleness and you want to be booed up. But there will come a point where it's like, you will be booed up and you'll be just fine. But then you wish that, oh, I wish I went out more stuff like that. So it's like, just do it right now. That's my hope. That's where, that's where I'm getting at. I'm going to let my concealer dry down a little. Of course, I'm using the boy this week. I really, really want to try the hourglass one. But I still have a lot of Too Faced one and I don't. And I'm really trying to do the whole the influencing or whatever they call it, buying products just to buy them. Like I have I have two chestnuts and I have two toffees. Like I'm good off concealer for a while. So maybe like later in the year. If I wanna if I wanna treat myself, I will get it. But yeah, that's just how I've that's how that's what's really really changed my perspective and from being like pressure pressure to like now being chill because not being chill is like ugh, like i was tired like i was just tired and another thing that i've really been like doing is to like pray for my husband right now is because and it's so and it's so like one what one, one of the little things that happened in my head is like when i start to change when i'm going through my season with change, i'm like oh is my husband praying for me i think that also excitement is there i'm gonna link the book that i've been doing recently where it's just like praying for your husband and all that stuff and I feel like I even do my little recordings that I plan to give him, and it just feels like I'm talking to a real person. Yeah, I don't know who they are, but I'm excited about it. And it's just like, I'm prepared in the way of prayer, but in the way of like, where my husband at every time I go out, I'm tired. I am tired. I'm taking myself out of the equation. I'm sitting back and God let your will be done, but I will tackle it in the place of prayer. Cause I was telling somebody, I was like, when I meet my husband, I want to see the evidence of my prayer on his life. Which we're going to talk about that later. There's a lot to talk about. This video is going to be so long because I'm still on the first topic and I have 14 minutes recorded. Oh my gosh. Another thing that helped me to take the pressure off was going from the mindset of if to when. I think, like I said, I've never been in a relationship. I think for a long time I started to have the mindset of like if this will ever happen to me. And now I've changed my mindset to when it will happen because I know that I feel like that's in God's plan for me to get married and all that before I had the mindset of if it would ever happen because year by year goes by I keep forgetting to do my makeup because year by year goes by and it's like no relationship no prospects you really start to wonder like if this is meant for me and being in that mindset of if it would ever happen it really really took a toll on me my self-confidence my um it took a toll on me it took a big big toll on me that I now even unpacking and realizing the effect that it had on me but we thank God for progress and let me blend out my concealer because my face is getting dry. Okay, now that we got our concealer blend, I'm going to preface this by saying this is in no way, shape, or form trying to shade these people. I don't know their life. I don't know if this is facts. I don't know anything. This was just my interpretation. What I'm about to share was simply a personal problem. It wasn't their problem. It was simply a personal problem that I had to go to God about. Another thing that contributed to my mindset of if was a lot of times we see in media, if you look at the NFL roster, you see a lot of people of this color. If you look at their wives and girlfriends, you see a lot of people of this color. So that was something that I already had in my mind that a lot of black men, they date mainly white, um, Hispanic, like white passing, um, Asian women. They just don't really date a lot of dark skinned black women. We see that in media. We see the way they ridicule black women all the time. So I remember in like 2021, when I was really getting to Mav, I think when they came out with Old Trick Basement, and Mav always has a special place in my heart because they were like one of the first bands that I really, really listened to. So it was like, I was following everybody on Instagram. I was like, ooh, I wanna see what y'all doing. When is the tour coming? All that stuff. And I remember that I had, I already knew that notion of like a lot of black men, they date mainly white, Caucasian, Spanish, white, Asian, whatever. That's what they, that's what we see in media. But then when I was also looking at these men that I was like, okay, these are Christian men, men to like look up to. Again, this is a personal problem. I I'm going to keep saying that. This is a personal problem. It had nothing to do with them. But now looking at these Christian men that are not supposed to be like the world. And there's also that same notion surrounding them. It really messed my head. Chandler Moore is with the white woman. Dante Bo at the time was with the white woman. Their drummer, Harold Brown, is with the white woman. I believe David from um, Elevation Music, Elevation Worship, he's with the white woman. Um, I believe one of the owners of Mav City is with the white woman. There was another pastor that was trending at the time, Taylor, um, Pastor Madu, Social Dallas, he's with the white woman. So like, when I saw all of that, 
I can't lie, it broke my heart and I had to unfollow everybody. Petty, I don't care. But I really had to unfollow everybody because it was a hurt in my heart. There was a hurt in my heart that I really, really had to go to pray to God about because, and again, I'm not saying that these men are with their women because they're simply white. I don't know them from anywhere. However, seeing them also have that same representation, it made me realize like, dang. So even the Christian men who are the men that I'm supposed to go after, they're also, it doesn't seem like they're also dating black women. So it really contributed to that mindset of like, if I'll ever get married or if I'll ever find somebody that likes me or loves me and whatnot, Again, personal problem, but seeing that, it really messed with my head. I literally had to go to God to be like, God, help me fix this hurt in my heart, whatever the case might like, help me get over this anger or whatever that I'm feeling because I expected to see that in the world. I didn't expect it to see in Christian men. Again, I'm not saying these men are with their women simply because they're white. This was just a personal issue that I had to work through. But thank God for, I got comfortable. But we thank God for growth and all and um, yeah. That's just what I want to say. And I debated sharing them because it's a personal problem, but I did want to share because I feel like other black women might have filled the same struggle. It's like, I know when Shayla Moore got married. I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh. It's not funny at all. I do just want to say like, pray to God about it. Pray to God about it. Which is another thing that I forgot to mention earlier in terms of like, dealing with my season of singleness. There's also been a lot of inward work. Yeah, I've really been working on myself. I can't even lie. Because like, a lot of times we pray for stuff, but are we really ready? Are we? In praying for my husband, I've also been realizing that I'm like, oh, I want my man to be this, this, that, and third. What have I been doing? So it's like, as much as I'm praying for my husband, I also need to like get ready and prepare for marriage as well too, because not that I don't think you will ever be perfect when you go into marriage. However, there are certain things that you can tackle right now while you're single. So I think that has also been another thing that I've been like working on. This is the last thing I'm going to mention in terms of singleness. And this is also realizing why I wanted to get married. Granted, I can't wait to be a my man, my man kind of woman and all that stuff. I wanted to fit a certain aesthetic. You know that aesthetic, I know people, this one is controversial, but you know that aesthetic of like the Christian couple that are like maybe like 22 to 26, they got married, they're living together because they want to do certain stuff, but they also, it's like, I just love that aesthetic because I feel like the moment you get married, especially when you get married later on in life, it's like, if you don't start popping out that baby, especially as a Nigerian woman, if you don't start popping out them babies like now, it's an issue. And the thing is, I feel like a superficial reason why I wanted to get married is like, one, I love to look at that aesthetic. Like, you can just tell from when they post on Instagram, the husband got the little baggy pants, the wife got a little baggy shirt, he has a little beanie on, the wife has like her little gold jewelry, she has a little purse. They just fit a certain aesthetic, so I can't lie. Part of me did want to have that like young couple aesthetic, like I found my man early on in life, that type of thing. So that was one of my like superficial reasons to why I wanted to get married. And I didn't realize until like last week, I was like, oof, girl, aesthetic purposes? You want to go marry somebody for aesthetic? Another reason I also mentioned along with that is when you get married younger, you have the liberty to like live two to three years without anybody putting the pressure of like oh so when are the babies gonna come because if you get married at like 24 you're like oh you guys still have like two three years to go but if you get married at 30 they're like okay so where's the baby on your one month anniversary like they it's different so i think that was also part of it and knowing that i've always been somebody that i wanted to enjoy my marriage before we started to have kids and it's like as i get older i turn 25 later this year i'm currently 24 and it's like the inch of how long I can live before we start popping out babies, it's like closing in little by little. So that was one of like the superficial reason why I wanted to get married. And realizing that like that's not a valid reason to like want to get married also has helped me out in this whole process. So yeah. I think that's all I have to say about the season of singleness. That's all I have to say. I've talked for 30 minutes. What are you talking about, Penny? Now we're going to go into the role that the church plays. And yeah, the role that the church plays. I think that's all I have to say. I feel like... The church has done like a constant, let me not say constant, be careful with your words, speak wise words, Kemi. Um, I think the church, and especially culturally, I'm Nigerian, I think the church has done a disservice to men and a disservice to women in the sense that there are a thousand and one women conferences about preparing for marriage, season of singleness, but when it comes to men, you hear that? Nothing. Exactly. Nothing. They don't, Jack Diddley's squat is not said about men in terms of preparing. And it's just this constant battle of like, you're preparing these women to be prayer warriors and this, that, and the third, and like get ready for marriage. But the men don't know Jack Diddley's squat. That's going to create what they say in the Bible as, let's say it together, unequally yoked. 
ding, 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 you got it. Like, no, <laughs> it's just, where are the men at these conferences, even events for like young adults, the, the disparity between men and women, insane. There are about 10 women to every like men. And that's why, that's why the cattiness happens. Because everybody's like, ooh, he's cute. Is he really cute or is he the only single guy there? Let's think about it. And it's like instilled in us from like birth. Even as a Nigerian woman, it's constantly like, oh, well, you know, you got to cook because of your husband. Cooking is a life skill. What are we talking about here? Cooking is a life skill. I feel like from, more, from when we're young, they're just constantly preparing women. Oh, you got to learn how to cook and clean. You got to learn how to smit. You got to learn how to this. But like, where are the lessons for the men? Some of these men, I was talking to somebody, some of these men don't know basic human decent like manners because there's constant education for women and there's nothing for men. And it's like, we've made marriage an idol. Like, I feel like, I'm not saying all, but what is it called? The Bechdel test? If you can go a little bit without talking about men. Most women conferences, they will fail the Bechdel test. I promise you. I think that's what it's called. I'm probably not saying it right, but the idea is that two women are talking together and a topic of the man does not come up. A lot of these women conferences, they will fail at that. And I'm not saying we should not discuss these things, but it's almost like a woman's purpose in church. And I truly don't mean to say this like rude and I hope I'm not offending God, but it feels like the woman's purpose in church is to learn how to be a wife and to learn how to be a mother. Back to the unequally yoked, that's why you have a lot of women that are like prayer warriors. They are fighting them demons in the middle of the night, but their husband, they have to beg them to come to church because these principles have not been taught to them since they were a young age. All they taught them is, you're a husband, you're the head of the household, your wife is supposed to submit to you. There has to be more, I'm getting so upset right now, I didn't even mean to get upset. But I just think that marriage is not the end all be all of every single woman. I think it's a very, very important part. It's something that the Bible has clearly talked about in the Bible once for us. But it's almost like if a woman is not married, church, culturally, worldly, wherever you look, if a woman is not married, no amount of accolades can compare to that MRS degree. Nothing. Unless she has them two rings on her finger, everything else is like, well, she hasn't got married. We'll keep praying for her. <sighs> And again, I'm not saying I don't like marriage. I'm not saying we shouldn't discuss. I can't wait to be a my man, my man, my man woman. Because I know I, I, me and my man, I can't wait for that era. But at the same time, there's, there's more to life than just prepare for marriage. Learn how to cook, learn how to clean, learn how to submit. There's more to life than that. We're doing a disservice by only teaching one piece of the puzzle. We're supposed to come together. And when one person has all the knowledge and one person doesn't, there's going to be conflict. This is even going to a whole different topic, but we just need to make, we need to balance out the equation of the topics of both men and women. I don't know what we can do to get men more in church, but something needs to happen because like marrying wrong, I pray that against my destiny and my like my friends and family's destiny. That's I'm not I pray against the spirit of like I'm begging my husband to pray. Like let's say a family comes in times of trying times, you can't even count that your husband will back you up in the place of pray. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I would will, I will love for it to be like, I'm going through something and my mind is like, okay, boom, let's pray. That will become a challenging thing in a lot of families if the husbands aren't taught the same principles that are being taught to women. Because they just think as long as, I, as, long as I, the finances are good, as long as I provide, I'm good. There's more to it than that. And this also leads into the whole thing of like a Christian man and a man of God, they ain't the same thing. Some of the crazy stories I've heard from women, they've been done by Christian men. Again, because the knowledge is not taught, these Christian men are doing them more dirty than the, re than the worldly men. Like, that's crazy. And not that women don't have the ability to be wild too. I think we've been taught as a young age that like, you can't act like that. So we now know and then we develop it better as a relationship. But like, if you're not teaching men that from a young age, they're just gonna act any kind of way. And it's just not cool. It's just not cool. That's all I was gonna say. And I'm super grateful that I have great examples around me. If not, I would have gotten the mindset of like, oh my gosh. I'm never getting married, yada, yada, yada. Men are this, men are that, Christian men are this, Christian men are that. So I do know that it's possible and it's a beautiful thing to see, but I do believe that we still need to do a better job at just equipping men with the knowledge of like, be the be the leader, be the main prayer. of Like, why are the women carrying the whole burden of the prayer life of their family? The men should be the one that are like stepping up and nothing is more attractive than a man of God that worship God freely. Like, he's not scared to cry. He's not scared to raise his hand a little bit. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That's cute. I'm not looking. I promise. I, I, I pay attention to worship. I worship my God. But 
every now and then when you catch it, you're like, oh, that that that's attractive. Not you too school. Not you're too cool for. How does it go? You're too cool for school. Nah. And not a performance, but God, God will check your heart. I'm almost done, but I did want to just say this before I finish my last point. I don't mean these videos to be like ranty. It's more of I feel where you're coming from in terms of if you're in the season of singleness or whatever you're going through. I feel where you're coming from, number one, and I relate to you. And number two, also to like, like I said, let's pray. Because I feel like I don't know why Christian men are not at church. It's something that we have to pray about so we can actually live out the life, the godly life that God wanted us to live as a unit and not be unbalanced or unequally yoked or whatever the case might be. But my last point that I wanted to bring up with the topic of modesty was even the whole like purity thing. They say it from a young age, wait till married, don't have sex, yada yada yada. And that's cool and all, but they also scared us. I'm gonna encourage you, go to the Bible, read what it says for yourself, pray to God for your own revelation and all, but they were like, don't have sex, because you're gonna get pregnant, you're gonna have diseases. And that's very true, but it's also like, how about the part of like being holy? being pure let's have a chat about that that's a fun chat and i feel like that's a message that's mainly like pushed onto women i'm not saying men are not taught about purity but it's mainly pushed onto women i think we need to even the scores like let's teach both sides about that so that way women don't run into men who they're trying to stay pure for them they should be staying pure for god not because oh well since you want to wait i'll wait with you that sounds like a deathly combo. <laughs> that sounds like a death. It should be a mutual, we're doing this to put God first and to be pure. These lashes are not sticking. I'm about to take them off. Piss me off. Purity is like a whole different, like, big topic in itself. I'm not going to dive deep into that because I'm not going to dive deep into that. <laughs> I've just had this recent passion, honestly, of trying to spread the knowledge I know now to, like, younger people in a better way. Because I wish somebody like, not that I wish I had better, I just wish I had a better perspective on a lot of things. Like, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I'm just finishing up with this bold lip really quick. My lips are so dry. It's so cold in Jersey right now, it's insane. I literally applied um a lip balm before we started this and my lips were already so chapped. I really just want my, I feel, oh my gosh, it's dry. But yeah, that's it guys. This is my makeup. I really wanted to go with something sweet and cute. Don't pay attention to my lashes. They're playing with me. I can't find any of my lashes anywhere. So this is all I have, but yeah, I just really, really want to talk about the Christian dating and the marriage thing and all that stuff. I feel like there's more stuff that I probably didn't cover, but I think I covered a decent amount, especially the season of singleness. Um, how I wish the church really helped us a lot more in terms of marriage and all that stuff, which is something that we're going to have to pray for our future husbands that like, yeah, yeah. We're going to have to pray for our future husbands that they break those stereotypes. So, yeah, I feel like there was more I wanted to say, but I can't remember right now. And I wrote it down. But if you are single, like I said, try and enjoy the season. It's not forever. It's temporary. It's real, real temporary. There'll be a time where you be my man, my man, my man. You see, you see my shoulder roll? You like my man, my man, my man. You get to be a passenger princess, not just in, like, the car, but in life. He just tells you, get dressed, and you go. That season is coming. And like I said, don't let what you see either in the world or in Christian men as well. Like I said, with my perspective about what I see, try not to let that discourage you, number one. And then number two, just pray for God to, I don't know. Yeah, pray to God. Pray for your future husband ahead of time and pray that you will see the evidence of your prayers in him. Because when he comes, I want to be like, oh yeah, I pray for that. And that's how he's doing that. Same thing. I hope he's also praying for me right now too. So that way he can also see the evidence of his prayer in my life. But my whole point is, I don't know what my point is. I just wanted to talk, as I always do. Lastly, though, if you haven't been in a relationship, please don't stress. Don't let that deter your life. Please don't let it make you question your self-worth if you're beautiful and all that. Go to the Bible. The Bible tells you you're beautiful. The Bible tells you how God loves you. So try, no man is ever, ever going to fill that void. No matter how many times somebody tells you you're beautiful, if you don't feel it, those are just words. So please, you're never going to be perfect when you meet your future husband, but just try and do some inner work on yourself and enjoy your life, regardless of not if you have a boyfriend or a husband right now. So that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. I'll see you in the next one, and bye! There's no water in this.